rolling. Boom. What up, y'all? Welcome to the Soccer Comic Rant. My name is Ian Edwards, and uh, we're going to get into the show. We're going to talk about Real Madrid completing their destiny and beating Liverpool against everybody's odds to win their 14th Champions League title. We're also going to talk about Nottingham Forest uh, winning the opportunity to be in a Premier League this year. And that game against, uh, who, who did they play again? Huddersfield. Huddersfield, who are going to feel ripped off. Uh, they should have got at least one of two penalties, but they didn't. And uh, we're going to talk about maybe some transfers, what our teams and other teams are going to have to do in the transfer market uh, during the off season. And Lewandowski, Mane, both as far as what teams are they going to end up and who deserves a Ballon d'Or and uh, England squad, America squad. There's a bunch of stuff. Uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you for listening. Like and subscribe on all platforms. Our sponsors, all things, I mean, uh, On The Volley Apparel. That's who they are. On The Volley Apparel. You go to On The Volley Apparel, you get 20% off if you use our promo code, Comic Rant. And they have hoodies, sweatshirts, tanks, and T-shirts. We also have our own three T-shirts there from the Soccer Comic Rants. If you want to cop one of those, uh, go to onthevolleyapparel.com. And thank you, Aaron Brongard, for putting this together, producer of the show. And uh, we have two of the normal, usual suspects, uh, Southampton fan and stand-up comic out of England, Lee Hudson. What up, fam? Hey. Season's uh, yeah. over. Season's done. All the games are done. The internationals now. Women's Euros, all sorts still happening. So football doesn't stop. Yeah, apparently not. And that's the complaint that a lot of American friends have. They don't understand that football is always going on. But because <laughs> it helps them understand the game, they don't want to understand even more. It gives them a reason for some reason. They don't understand there's different leagues at different times, and it's not the same people playing. But we'll get maybe get into that. And we have uh, Neil Chakrabarty, stand up, hey. Chelsea fan. What's the deal? All good. All good. I'm waiting sure, for the season to end. It's over. It's over now. <laughs> it's over. You got to finally, Chelsea got new owners. I, yeah. Like, they you're, not, you're not owned by the UK government anymore. <laughs> you're owned by the Dodgers. <laughs> and a, cons a consortium. I, I just heard that that consortium has like 900 million billion dollars. I think it's ninety yeah. billion dollars. Ninety billion, yeah. I so mean, that, that's the, pretty the impressive. Private equity fund manages. Uh, uh, it's it's complicated. Yeah. Anyways, the fact is, nobody needs billions to run the football team. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, Abramovich was supposed to be this benefactor, right? And he only owed one point five billion over like twenty years. So you you don't need that much money. Hmm. At least you can but start making about, some of it back by selling shirts again now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pies. Shirts and pies. Beer. Yeah. So I guess the first thing we want to get into is the Champions League final on how wrong you two were. I'm thinking that Liverpool was going to pull this off. Actually, I can't remember. I'm just accusing you all of being wrong. <laughs> I know 100%. I was like, Real Madrid... Liverpool on paper has the right to win this, but the destiny factor from Real Madrid made me feel like they were going to pull this off somehow. And even when you watch the game, like there's a, you look at that midfield of Modric, Casemiro, and Cruz. It's an aged midfield, but five Champions Leagues, and they just seen it all. You know, they've just seen it all. They've seen and faced every adjustment that every team could put on them over, you know, however long they've been playing for Real Madrid. And especially in this season when you have to play PSG, Man City, Chelsea, and then Liverpool, who 
kind of all have like similar coaches who have the same ideology of football. It's like, it's hard to be surprised after you've gone through those three teams to not be able to get past Liverpool. But again, to me, it was just, if you watch Real Madrid play all season and see what they did in the Champions League, you're like, hmm, they're, they're going to win this. The only team they couldn't beat in the Champions League final was Sharif. And they've had, <laughs> they've had trouble with Sharif the two previous, this season in the Champions League and last season they lost to them. So what do you guys, what's your guys' take on being wrong? I'm assuming that y'all said Real Madrid, said uh, Liverpool. I put, I put money on Real Madrid. Okay, all right. So, so, we, so we got money I, then. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't. I didn't get it in the end. I also had uh, Ben. I'd Real Madrid to win, get three corners, and Benzema to have a shot on target, which he didn't do because the one he did have That's didn't just count. Crazy. Um, the one the Champions League and Benzema didn't have a shot on target. Yeah, yeah, I didn't um, which is <laughs> pretty mad. But I did say last week that I thought Liverpool had, the, you know, the stronger team, but Real Madrid had the, the sort of psychology, um, and it proved that way. I mean, because I mean. I don't think Real Madrid even played that well. I don't think tactically they did that well because uh, they were getting opened up time and time and time and time They don't, they don't time believe again. in playing well. <laughs> well, it's like we said in the other games, like, it's not really been anything tactical from them or them being sort of good as a unit, but them just be having individuals who step up in the big moments. Like Courtois you know, stepped up in all the big moments and Vinicius stepped up in the big moment. Um, but I thought they, were, they played bad as a team. Um, like I say, they got opened up constantly 24 shots for Liverpool which is unheard of in a Champions League final for a team to have 24 shots it was only nine on target <laughs> they, they were but big chances though I, I would say yeah the, yeah quarter is a goalkeeper he was a man of the match so yeah they were big chances but I, I don't think I, I, th- I think I disagree with you when you say they don't play like a team it's a, a bunch of people with in the bunch of individuals, I feel like it, it's if they're the definition of a team to me. So I just feel the opposite way. Not really. I, I feel like if they were if they were cohesive as a team, they would have stopped Liverpool from breaking them down so easily, um, or, they, or they would have caused them more problems going forward because they didn't really do much. Four shots, two on target. They weren't, uh, you know a potent attacking threat and they weren't that good defensively. So I don't know what they were doing as a team if they weren't attacking well or defending well. Um, Just the last line of that defence was very good and they were the one team who actually took one of their big chances, which they didn't have very many of. Um, So, you know, that's what wins them a game is that they were clinical in the one moment that mattered. Um, But I think on another day, they could have got absolutely hammered. Um, But, you know, it it was their year. Yeah, I mean, I like how people, even like Lee, you're a goalkeeper. So it's weird when the goalkeeper is a man of the match. It's kind of discounted. Like he's a part of the team. There's a reason why they got Courtois, you know, and was like, uh, you know, he's a part of their defense. And his job is to like step up when, you know, they can't. Like, like control the game as much as possible. And like I said, that midfield of Real Madrid is kind of aged, but they did have the ball 50% of the game. And there were some chances, especially in the second half, where I don't think Real Madrid made it to the shot part of those chances, but a bad pass or two by Benzema kind of stopped them from winning the game 3 nothing. You know? And... I don't understand why they put on Sabalas instead of before Rodrigo, but only Ancelotti can explain that. Yeah, and Rodrigo's it, been the man for the big moments this season. Yeah. What do you think about the game, Neil? Who did you say? I, I said I'm scared of counting Real Madrid out once again. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> because, I mean, that's exactly how, how it happened, right? I, I don't think, like, to back up Lee's point, I mean, of course, when you win the Champions League, you have done something good. You don't win the Champions League just as if, uh, on a fluke. But relatively, I mean, this has to be the most outrageous Champions League win of all time. Like, 
uh, I've not seen a team that every round they're so much behind the eight ball and they still <laughs> keep winning and winning and winning. <laughs> so, and in fact, they've lost four games this Champions League uh, season. I don't know the last time a team won the Champions League losing four games. I mean, they won three in the in the in the knockout rounds, and they also lost to Sheriff back at the group phase. So that that's how their Champions League season started by losing to Sheriff from I don't know Romania, I guess. Yeah, Moldova, I think. Moldova, yeah. Jeez. So, so uh, yeah, this is this has got to be one of the most. They kind of like destinied their way, the heritage their way to to Champions League win. Uh, mm-hmm. But you know it's 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 not about competition. So so it can have it. As you said, like Kortva is employed by them to do it. So and even if you look at the last couple of um, like last season it was a one nil this season the one nil in the Champions League final. Last season was a one nil the season before that by PSG was a one nil um, the yeah. season before that, Liverpool Tottenham, it was 2 0, but one of them was a penalty. So you've had yeah. now four games where you've, the team, teams between them have only scored one goal, uh, in, ex, except for penalties. So the finals, they are tight. And I think Liverpool had, a, you know, they essentially played a Liverpool game. Um, but they've had this problem with scoring now in finals. Like they played two finals against us, one 20 minutes, they didn't score. They didn't score in this one. So then they played um, three 30 minutes of finals this season without scoring. And even though they had a large share of the shots, they only had, I think, I was looking at the big chances created, I think they had one or two and Madrid had three. So Madrid somehow, like they... Like, this is the best example I've seen of a team maximizing their moments. Like, football, at the end of the day, you know, it's it's a simple game, right? you got to put the ball back of the net. So, anything can happen for 87 minutes, 88 minutes. If the two, if you get 2-0, if you get two goals, you can actually win 2-0 by, even despite playing bad the entire game. So, yeah, uh, I, I think the battle, Vinicius versus Trent Alexander, it was considered to be, you know, Benzema versus Van Dijk and Vinicius versus Trent. Um, I, I thought Trent did well for the most part. But again, like you, when you switch off against Vinicius at the back post, and um, it was kind of weird, like the entire Liverpool backline, which is usually so solid, they like they let this cross go in completely, you know, without without anybody uh, threatening it. The cross went in. Uh, Van Dijk and Konate, like they didn't, they, you know, they were out of position. Van Dijk was very much out of position. And, um, you know, back post, uh, Alexander Allen, like he was completely blindsided. Vinicius slaughtered it in. So, yeah, it could have been worse, I think. It was uh, Valdeverde or Ceballos? Valverde. Valverde, yeah. So, he, he Ceballos it. would never do nothing like that. Ceballos did something, though. Ceballos he never tried. Put for, yeah, he, try, he, he has precision misses. No, I'm talking about the guy precision. who messed up one of the chances. Who was this guy who had like a tap-in across? He, he just needed to... Ceballos. That I'm was Ceballos, right? Ceballos. Yeah, 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 probably. He just had to like, um, you know... Later, that was Casemiro. Yeah. That was Casemiro. Casemiro, yeah. that was Casemiro. When it came off his off his ankle and went back, went behind. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. So, or did he try a back pass? He tried to pass it instead of. Shoot. I think he tried to square it Casemiro. to Benzema. Square, yeah, yeah, yeah. He should have shot. Should have shot. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, Madrid had. Yeah, I don't know how they do it. <laughs> this should be like you know, there should be case studies of this at Stanford or something. They they, they should be teaching this in school. <laughs> This yeah, entire it's, season, which I by Real Madrid. Yeah, it's pretty amazing that a team that had 13 Champions League going in came into this game as an underdog. So then you could root for them. It's almost like you're rooting for like West Ham or some team that's never been there before to beat this mighty Liverpool team. And we're looking at, <laughs> oh, poor Modric, poor Casemiro, poor Cruz, poor Benzema. How are they going to deal with this Liverpool? And it's like, these guys just won La Liga. And they beat 
all the top teams to get here and they're going to face a top team to win this yeah. thing eventually. And uh, they, they just do it and they come back from being down and they do whatever they need to do to make it happen. Now, you was talking about the goal mm-hmm. and uh, I, I think they lost the ball on the side of, of uh, what's the other corner wing back? Robertson. Oh, Robertson. So he was out of position. And then, so then Van Dyke shifts over. So when he shifts over, there's two, the, the Valverde crossed it, but he also had a pass on this, on the same side. So that kind of pulled Van Dyke out the way. And then the, the ball just, and, and that means everybody comes over. Canote, come, Canote comes over and then there's Benzema yeah. like playing this thing where am I going to go to uh, behind Konote or in front of Konote. And at the right time, he made the decision to go in front of Konote. And then Valverde, and then Valverde slices it through. And it's just, it's just one split second of a chance. I mean, everybody and, uh, moved over. It's almost as if they, nobody knew that Vinicius space for Real Madrid. Like, everybody slid over and left that entire back post wide open. I think Klopp teaches them to, like, pressure the ball. And if you pressure the ball, the person can't make the pass. But the, the pass had a decoy. Like from when I, I saw like a highlight where there's a, a runner, say if I'm, if mm. I'm Valverde, there's a runner and the, and the cross is this way. There's one of my teammates is like right here. And it's like, there was the fake of going right there and putting it across. I don't know. Also, like the, just the, just the quality of the pass as well, though. Like, yeah, yeah. If he if he tries to whip that in yeah. the air, I don't think it's a goal. I think the keeper maybe gets it, or a mm-hmm. defender can get to it a little bit easier. But he put it in the one place where no one could get it. Um, to you know, it was pinpoint to slice it through that gap on the floor as well. It just said, you know, here you go, Vinicius, put that in the net. It was, you know, he still did well to sort of alter his body to to finish it the way he did. But mm-hmm. I mean, that was the only way the chance would be presented that easy was if it went through that gap on the floor and, you know, he's managed to put it through there. It's a, it's a world-class ball because I think a lot of players in that position would try and whip a ball off the ground. Right. Um, so to pick that out is yeah. Top class. I would say the ball and the pass beat Trent Alexander Arnold more than, more than Vinicius. It was just, sometimes it's just, I feel like, if that was Pirlo or Modric, everybody would be like, great pass. And they wouldn't be saying Trent Alexander-Arnold got caught out of position. But since it's Valverde, who's not known for that, nobody's saying, what an amazing pass. But that, that, because passes can kill a defense. You know, mm-hmm. Barcelona used to do that shit all the time. And this is just nothing you could do about it, no matter who you are. A good pass will, like, fuck the whole thing up. So I, so I think that's a part of it, too. So I agree with Lee. So go pass, pass. Is there... I mean, Trent, Trent was, this time, like, Trent, usually when Trent is out of position, he's, he's not there in that defensive line. He was there this time. He just wasn't aware where Vinicius was. Like he snuck up say, on him. And I wouldn't even say he wasn't aware. I would say he was like, if I could get myself in a position, I'll get this pass before he can. You know, because sometimes you play it like that. You you play like I got one guy there, one guy there, and then I'm here, and Vinicius is behind. I, like we're all saying he didn't see him, but it's like it's like how is how is this guy? With the space and of all of us going to get this ball, it's impossible. Yeah, Unless... yeah, because the keeper—he was very close to the keeper. Trent. Who was the Trent? Like there was not not a huge gap, but there was still a gap, and there, there was space on that pass. Yeah, it's, a, it's a good pass, man. It's a perfect pass. Mm. Yeah, like I know you want to blame him because we had the discussion last week about or two weeks ago, like. <laughs> about Trent switching off. So I, no, I, but I, I don't that, think he switched off on this just, one because I because he you. actually had a good defensive game this game. Right. 
But I, I, but as soon as he went in, I was like, Neil is going to say, he's going to bring up the Trent Alexander flaws that we discussed. Well, it wasn't just me, though. I mean, like, I, I think a lot of people kind of... Think, I know, because, I know, I know. Because it was being billed as, you know, the whole Trent versus Vinicius thing. But I think he kept Vinicius quiet for the most part, if you see, like, the entire game. It's yeah. not like Vinicius was absolutely balling it like how he has most of the season. Right. Uh, and I, I think it was that entire line. They everybody moved a couple of yards away from where they should have probably been. And yeah, they shifted a lot. Yeah. It, it, I think that remember that offside goal that got discredited? Oh yeah. That that rattled them. Mm. And they were never the same after that. Like they kind of reverted to a like a lesser a, a team with less confidence, probably. They 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 it, it kind of got them, like, everybody shifting like that probably was a panic move. I don't know if you're supposed to all shift like that or if there's a better way to, like, handle what the, the, a, a situation like that, but they didn't handle it 100%, probably like how they would have handled it. Like, like that pass, it went mm-hmm. in front of Trent, but it would have easily been a pass behind Trent, and there was another real budget player coming in, and he would have been cleared on goal too. So there was a lot of space, you know, near the back post that was just left there. And there were a couple of Real Madrid players waiting there. And we got to give Real Madrid uh, the credit for planning like that, too. Mm-hmm. Like, they plan their counters, or they know where to be, when to be there. Like, it's a part of their game all season, like, countering. Like, they're like, they know they're a bunch of old guys. This <laughs> is their last hurrah. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's, if they, you know, how you was talking earlier about, uh, them, the teams that they beat and they lost four games. That's soccer yeah. rope dope. That is straight up soccer rope mm-hmm. dope. Like lay on the ropes, just roll with the punches. And then when they're tired or there's a moment when they think they're on top, then you strike and it's just nothing you could do about it. Yeah. Especially, and then just to have Gareth Bale on the bench, Hazard on the bench, not even considering using them. Isco on the bench. That is another unbelievable thing. Yeah. And, and what do you guys think of Ancelotti? I'm super interested in Ancelotti. Like, but as a coach, Lee, what do you think of him? I mean, you can't knock his record of what he's won. <laughs> um, I think he's, um, he's an interesting manager as well and that he's someone who knows how to manage big players. He knows how to work with with superstars and with players who've, you know, because it, it's hard to manage players who have been there and done everything a lot of time because they'll be headstrong. They'll be like, I, I know what I'm doing. I don't need, you know. And I think you've seen in, inexperienced managers struggle with players like that before. Um, you know, I think Zidane showed that he was quite good at that, mainly because of what he carried as a player. He managed to carry that into management as well. And win things, but Ancelotti's, you know, he's up there. I mean, I remember when he won them La Decima, which was the tenth European trophy. They've been chasing that for ages. Um, I think that was when they beat Atletico Madrid in the final, when they all scored in that game. I think Ronaldo scored in that game as well. Um, which is crazy to think. Last, last minute or something. Yeah, and it went to extra time that one. Um, yeah. It's crazy that that was number ten, and then they've since gone on and won so many more. Wow. Um, in that time is is just nuts, and with you know a, a core group of players that have been there the whole time as well for that, um, which is just nuts, really. So yeah, I mean the fact that he you know has managed to get the best out of a, an aging group of players, the fact that he's managed to manage superstars over the years as well. Um, you know, I, I mean, who knows what the fuck he was doing at Everton um, for a season? <laughs> just a little. <laughs> <laughs> just to go, go there, take take the Premier League money for a season, then uh, yeah, and there was that meme I sent where you know he was uh, the best thing he ever did for Everton was beat Liverpool in a final with Real Madrid. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I mean you can't knock his achievements. He's he's one of the greats. I mean what he did previously with like AC Milan as well. Um, you know he's 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 been there. He's done it. He's managed all of the great players in the game really. Um, so yeah, he's he's definitely up there. Um, you can't, you know, knock his achievements at all. I was watching to a, a, a interview because I'm like super mad interested in him because nobody really talks about Ancelotti as much as he'd done 
it, they treat him like a discarded relic of the past. And he's not your first person you want to hire. He's the first person you want to hire if there's nobody else to hire. If all the, the brand new shiny coins have been taken, then you go, all right, let's get Ancelotti. That's how people look at him. And so this guy that spoke about him, I forgot his name, Pete. He has a goalkeeper's name, but it, it, like a famous English goalkeeper's name, but it's not him. But he, he is one of the Everton assistant coaches. And you might know him, Lee, because when Ancelotti was at Everton, this guy got moved up to the first team too. So they were interviewing him on sports talk. And uh, he was, they were asking him, what is Ancelotti like? How does he do it? And it's, and, you know, Ancelotti is like your cool uncle, you know? And I'm, I'm going to mix my words in this guy's words. Like, he's like, he doesn't, he's always calm and doesn't panic. And he's good in pressure situations because he does not show pressure so that the teammates or the players feel it. And which is, you have to be super secure to like be calm when in scenarios where you can be like hyper and animated and it would be accepted, but he just stays calm. So I think it helps. It's almost like a uh, Phil Jackson, like stayed calm for the majority of what, you know, those big moments in his NBA career. And then his players stayed calm. And then I can see why like Zidane works because Zidane came, was an assistant under him and is a very calm dude. And, he, and as a calm dude, he is a Dan got a lot of shit out of that Real Madrid two, team too. So it's like not putting the pressure from the outside on the players as the coach, even though there's pressure there, or maybe the ability to, like Zidane played and ignored pressure. He just showed up and he's just showing players how to show up. And Ancelotti's just like, I don't have to be on this sideline ranting and raving. You all know what to do. We, we talked about it. We've been through it. So it hasn't always worked for him at every club, though. Um, I think he yeah, still not at won. He, I, th I think he still won trophies at Bayern, but the players there complained that he was too relaxed. <laughs> um, they were trying to do extra sessions behind his back and things. But they're um, Germans; they're used to being yelled at exactly, and and <laughs> and, 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 and uh, yelling back at people. Yeah. Well, he went in. He went in after Pep as well, and Pep's obviously super intense. Yeah, yeah. Um, and super detailed, whereas Ancelotti, yeah, a bit more relaxed, and it depends. You know, some players respond better to certain methods than others. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, you know, he's been a good fit when he was at the likes of AC Milan, when he was at Chelsea, when he was at Real Madrid. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, he, he's won things at all those clubs. Um, was it Paul Clement who was talking? He's a yeah, guy who's Paul worked Clement, with him yeah. before. Because yeah. he's, he's part of Lampard's staff yeah. at Everton now. Um, but he was his assistant at Real Madrid at PSG. At Chelsea. Um, and Chelsea as well. Because, he, yeah, he was a Chelsea youth coach. Prior. Yes, Paul Clement. Yeah, which is because it, it made me think of what's the, what's the, the goalkeeper that England had? It was a Clement. That was a Ray Clements. I think that was, it was Ray Clements. Else. Slightly different. Ray Clements. Yeah, yeah. That was different spelling. Yeah, he was um, Liverpool goalkeeper, and I think might have been Tottenham as well back in the day. Was he the guy saying that 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 shot against Pele? No, that was Gordon Cup. Banks. That was Gordon Banks, yeah, Gordon Banks, yeah. yeah. And there was yeah, Shilton as well, who was a big goalkeeper for England. Yeah, I remember Shilton. He was the guy, he, he's the guy who got him by Maradona's arm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, he's still better about it. <laughs> he should be. He he's like, even when Maradona passed away, he was like, yeah, yeah. I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm mad as fuck. There's a great uh, paragraph in Maradona's autobiography where he talks about how, uh, um, oh, what was it? Something about uh, not Rick, uh, Peter Shilton's birthday party or something, and he banned Maradona from. He's like, why well, would I want to go to a shit goalkeeper's birthday party anyway? Or something oh, like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Speaking of Maradona, uh, uh -huh. I think Ancelotti was in Napoli too. Yeah, he and, was. Uh, I, I think with Ancelotti, it kind of felt like he was going that the same route that we now see Jose Mourinho going, where you kind of 
there is a sense in the footballing world where you're not you you've passed you're past your peak so you're not going to get the a list jobs anymore so mm-hmm. you're probably going to get the best of the b list jobs and so he went to he went to napoli he, he was not great there um then everton again a team that is not fighting for top 4 maybe top 6 at best but they have the money so they can attract somebody like ancelotti and so it was kind of like two or three seasons of uh, him kind of you know being being below that level and i think it's really rare for a manager when you go to that level to again come back and be you know win the big things at uh, at an a list club in the first season so, back as well yeah and he got this job again out of the blue nobody expected him like he wasn't i think till day or two before he actually got the job nobody knew that he was going to actually uh, actually get it it was a very left field choice by uh, frontin uh, you know frontino perez and it's, it's mostly because of his association with his connection with ancelotti um there's like, personally they these guys get along really well and uh, I think Ancelotti kind of went there with like, hey, you know, this is a, these are all, a lot of these guys have been there, done that, they experienced the world class. I don't need to teach them tactics. They've, they've already seen every tactic there, there is. Some of them have already, already uh, or, you know, already played with me. So I can, they know my, you know, my basic style of play. And I just work on the man management, which is something I don't think that goes away with age. uh um, mm-hmm. so and even in a lot of his previous uh, stints like his man management has been talked about as one of his strengths so a team which was kind of looking down um it kind of makes sense that somebody like ancelotti comes in as you said like you know he's the 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 cool uncle <laughs> he, he he comes in smokes a cigar get, <laughs> get gets a good atmosphere uh uh you know in in and he's he's not overawed he's not somebody who'd be overawed by our real madrid dressing group right so um like real madrid and ancelotti kind of align like this version of real madrid and ancelotti really align with each other well so and it probably helped him that both atletico madrid and barcelona went but like barcelona was no well near uh, a serious team this season and uh, uh, madrid fell off a little bit atletico madrid fell off a little bit so um, like even last season people forget that uh, they had a bad uh, i mean i mean champions didn't win league. anything they didn't but they still reached the same finals of the champions league right and like they beat liverpool mm-hmm. in in the previous round they even though i feel we played far better than them but they still kept the score line tight that's what they really do they like they still figure out a way to keep the score line tight and then of course things didn't break for them last time this time they it did right but like they came out of that first like 1-1 they had no business being 1-1 mm-hmm. so uh, yeah i mean it's yeah there's something about real madrid and champions league that you just can't get rid of them yeah they keep it sticky unless you're sharif yeah. don't even try it. <laughs> they keep it sticky they stay on you yeah. they stay close and then uh, bam and then uh, and then uh I, i was gonna say something was it about ancelotti or was it about real madrid uh i can't remember what it is right now but uh interesting they to- had their um they had their presentation uh the other day i think it might be yesterday even or oh, yeah. is it the weekend and mm-hmm. where they they brought the players out in front of the fans they brought them out one by one and Gareth Bale came out and everyone was expecting him to get jeered and booed and everything but the fans gave him a really nice reception um which is surprising to given that the you know the shit he's got there the last few years um but it seems like you know they were appreciative of what he has done there in the past and because that was his send off because he's obviously out of contract in the summer I don't know where he's going but um you know that was uh that was it and they 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 actually gave him a bit of uh, appreciation which was uh, surprising yeah i saw that and i'm glad they did that he deserves mm-hmm. it and uh and i guess the fact that his wages are no longer on the books which is what they wanted they got what they wanted they also just won 
you know so they're like fuck it let's stop being assholes <laughs> and uh let's hey man peace but oh this is the thing i wanted to say about and it was about ancelotti like he has the key to life he doesn't panic he doesn't worry about pressures he doesn't even hold personal grudges like <clears throat> you you got call a phone call to come back to work for somebody who fired you and you're like Ancelotti's all right no problem I'll see you there <laughs> and the last conversation they had was hey what's up this is Florentino Perez you're fired click and and he, Ancelotti just all right and then I'll go do what I got to do and then it's just this guy is just just not bothered by anything and as a player, he played under the toughest conditions against some of the toughest teams in the world and won Champions League. And I think he won Italian League with AC Milan as a player. And then he just, whatever he learned as a player, he's just carried that through to coaching. And I think he just applies it to his life. Like, like he doesn't look like anybody. He doesn't carry himself like anybody. It, it's like, I'm just a guy like who like hey man there's people just shit on you it's like so that's on them he's just nonchalant and just this this inner confidence that's kind of just underrated it's just pretty amazing it's that's the that's the key to life right there Neil can I can I read something to you yeah this is from the gossip section <laughs> of the BBC <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Manchester United are considering Mason Mount. Don't tell me Mason Mount. Do not <laughs> tell me Mason Mount. Move for England, not Chelsea. England midfielder Mason Mount. You you know what happened? Like I was on Twitter, and it's I read the same thing, but in a different way, where it says. Uh, Eric Ten Hag is watching, is uh, is watching Mason Mount's contract situation at Chelsea yeah, as he considers a shock move. But like the chances of probably Ten Hag already getting fed up at Manchester United and considering a shock move are probably bigger than than <laughs> trying to land Mason Mount, so, depending on the way you read that sentence. <laughs> so I th I think it's worthy of a uh, of a query, but I think that's as much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think you need to be worried about that one. Yeah. Me neither. Me neither, bro. You're good. Like... But, but they have, like, both Mason Mount and Reece James have two years left on their contract. I think that's the reason why a lot of these will keep coming out until that thing is signed. If you lose him, it'll be to, like, if Barcelona comes calling on Real Madrid. Like, you know, Real Madrid with that agent midfield, mm -hmm. like, be like, hey, Mason, what was it? You, you're gonna stay over there? <laughs> you to do baseball owners? You don't know what they're doing. Like, you know, come get these, come get these rings. Come get this, come get these uh, slick Rick chains. <laughs> yeah, we'll make it happen. Uh, so do you guys watch the the Nottingham Forest? I think we we did all watch it together because we was chatting. Uh, yeah. Qualifying. Why can't I remember Huddersfield? Huddersfield. Yeah, yeah. Huddersfield. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, man. There's this. I think it's this COVID fog. <laughs> so, not them far Forest. I think it's the team that we all wanted to get back into the Premier League, just because of their history. And after 23 years, they played the the the, the knockout game to get into the Premiership, and they beat Sheffield Huddersfield. United, or whatever it's called, it doesn't matter. Huddersfield and Town, Huddersfield Town. Yeah, sorry, Huddersfield Town. <laughs> uh, damn, terrible. They beat Sheffield United in the in the semi final. Uh, so that's the why, yeah, because yeah. I watched like a, a bunch of like what the road that they went through, and Sheffield was definitely in there, and and Sheffield <laughs> actually outplayed them, and they got to this game, and they thought that not in parts wasn't going to be the favorites in this game. But the, I, I think overall they played a better game. How many penalties do you think 
Huddersfield should have got? Uh, one and a half. <laughs> um, it was, yeah, they had, they had. I mean, they had a big shout for both. It was crazy that the VAR didn't look at the second one. Um, the first one, VAR had a proper look at it, and then the second one, they just went, "No, nah, we're good." Um, and the second one was probably even more of a case than the first one. Um, the contact was a little bit more blatant, a little bit more clear. Um, so, I mean, yeah, Huddersfield can feel hard done by. Um, I don't think they played that badly. Uh, I thought Forest were the, were the better team overall, over the 90. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, it's good to see them back. It's a historic name back in the Premier League. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's a good club that haven't been in for a while. A uh, good manager, good young English manager as well. So it'll be exciting to see what he can do next year, especially... How old is that guy? Uh, I think he's early 40s, maybe. Okay. Um, but he won he won the Youth World Cup with England. Uh, he coached a lot of really you know good players who are in Premier League starting 11s now. Um, was he the head coach of that team or was he a... a he was, yeah. He was the head coach. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's a head coach. I mean, I say English, he's Welsh, um, but British. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's, he's 42, 42 years old. All right. So, well, good so, for him and yeah, good for Nottingham Forest. Yeah, I mean, like I say, it's good to see them back. They they do have a lot of players who are on loan. So it'd be interesting right. to see how they build their team uh, for the league next year because, um, you know, it's a lot of players to replace and build with. It'll be interesting to see if... Uh, if maybe Garner from you guys goes back for another season there because um, he's on loan, but they got Jed Spence on loan from Middlesbrough. I don't know if he'll stay. I think there'll be a lot of other clubs looking at him. Uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, it'd be interesting to see what sort of team they can put together. But Shit, do they have know. any players? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they should do eventually, but um, who knows? I mean, they're going to obviously get a bit more budget. But yeah, Jed Spence was on loan. Keenan Davis, who started up front, was on loan from Villa. Uh, yeah. Philip Zinkenagel on loan from Watford. Max Lowe on loan from Sheffield United. Did, did um, James, they James had a player on loan, from, on loan Man United. from a team that they beat in the round before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw a bong was on the bench. Bong used to be in a... That's going to be a... Bong? Bong. Yeah, he used to play for Brighton. He used to play for... Yeah, when when Brighton first came up to the Premier League, he was... uh, Yeah, he was around. Yeah. Uh, There's a question I wanted to ask Neil, but I can't remember right now. Is there anything else you guys want to discuss? And I'll remember that question. I mean, that game was pretty boring, though. Like, I hope. I was <laughs> I know, like either of this team, I, I hope this is just some sort of a final shit where, you know, you're, you're cagey, you're nervy, and so, you know, you're not trying to actually play football. You're just somehow trying to scrape through. So, mm-hmm. uh, I, I hope they play better football. Um, because, I mean, you know, Steve Cooper, he's a good coach. I've seen some of their games when he was at Swansea because um, we had Gallagher and Mark Gahey on loan at, uh, at the time there. Um, again, I think the idea was that because he's been with these guys at the England and 17 level, um, kind of makes sense to have him develop some of these guys. So he's, he's obviously in good, uh, he's come from the Liverpool Coaching Academy. Um, you know, he is a Liverpool youth coach. So he's, He's got good pedigree behind him, and his style, his right has been very steady. So it'll be good to see him in the in the Premier League. Mm. I right. think he it was interesting that obviously he got Swansea almost there. Yeah, last time and lost. So he clearly learned from that experience and was able to take that into you know into what he did this season. So um, yeah, I mean, especially I mean, obviously to mention as well that they were bottom of the league when he came in. Right. in September so they'd already started the season and started it badly and he came back group of players and turned the whole thing round which is um, pretty impressive yeah I think there was like some stat that said no team has has uh, started the league with that little points and it went on to like yeah, the promotion. promote it or something yeah. like 
Not so, even any division in England. Not that. Ever. Yeah, he pulled a, he helped pull an amazing job off. So good for him. They're gonna have to do something with that whole loan thing though, because I think Premier League the loan rules are different, right? You can't have more than two players on loan. Oh, I think it's three. Is it three? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it might be three. I'm not sure, but yeah, they're they're gonna have to rebuild that team. But I yeah. mean, some of them like like Jed Spence is on loan from Middlesbrough. They'll, they'll almost certainly be going in for him permanently. If not, mm. a couple other Premier League clubs will probably go for him. So, yeah, they're gonna have some building to do over the summer. But obviously, having that that Premier League money now helps. They just need to spend it wisely and not do what Fulham did mm. the other season when they came up and spent a hundred and something million and went back down. How much? How much is that game? What's the game worth? How much money? How much money did they get? Um, you don't get it as a sort of prize, but I mean, the TV money is no, worth no. hundreds of hundreds of millions. There, but there was there's an amount though. I, I, I should have looked. I, I heard it. It's a I, yeah. They they call it the richest game in football, and they put yeah. a nominal. They like they put a sort of guesstimate on it, but there's no <laughs> official. Um, right. Let me have a look. Richest game of football. because just of the Premier League money that they get for coming up. And plus, not the money you get for coming up, but the three years of parachute money if you go back down or whenever you go yeah. back down. So it's like, it's even worth more than, they call it the richest game in football. Yeah, and they, 170 they million they say it's worth. But it's worth more because even if you get relegated, you get three years of almost 100 million. To, I wonder how much you get every year you're down. After the secrecy, relegated clubs receive fifty five percent of the equal of of the equal share of broadcast and revenue paid to the Premier League clubs in the first year after relegation, 45% the following year and 20% in year three. I don't know what that means in money. But, well, and it says in, in, apparently in 2017-18, there was 243 million pound in parachute payments that got split amongst eight clubs. Mm. So they get a slice, but obviously the more teams that have been relegated recently, the less money they get. <laughs> if you're one of many teams that have been down, but obviously it runs out after three years, so. Right. And then do they still get... It depends if you're a Fulham who keeps coming up back and down. <laughs> or right. Norwich, yeah. Oh. I don't know if they're going to come back this time. Yeah, we'll you know, see. The Championship is such an unpredictable league. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, based on, especially based on Nottingham Forest making it out after the, the way they started the season. Mm. It's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Are there any topics you guys want to cover before any? What what's up with the questions? So, well, the England right team before, we could talk about. Yeah, the England oh, yeah. team. What's your what's your thoughts on that? But before that, just the Liverpool lo- lost twice this weekend. They lost the Champions League, and they probably gonna lose Saudi Omani. So it's like two pieces of bad news back to back. But then there's the the Lewandowski interview. What do you guys think of the the, the Lewandowski me done <laughs> interview? I mean, um, he's, he's thirty. Go ahead, Jay. Uh, you go now. I mean, I was saying like he's thirty four, right? Unless he's planning on ending his career at Bayern, that this he was going to move one of these summers. So yeah, he probably wants to, you know be in another league, be in another team before he ends his career. And uh, there's probably not much happening in terms of a challenge for him at uh, Bayern anymore. Sounds like he got beef, though, the way he did it. Yeah. He might be bitter about not getting a new contract or something. Yeah. But, I mean, okay. it gives him a chance to go and get a last payday from a signing on fee somewhere as a free transfer as well. You know, the signing on fee would be bigger than if he went on a transfer. Um, I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't hold his breath if he was hoping for Barcelona because 
there's a lot of moving parts there. There's a lot of things they need to do to to qualify for, um, you know, being able to afford even his wages, let alone you yeah. know, anything else. Um, I think they're trying to shift Usman Dembele from the sounds of it. Um, they're trying to get him out? Yeah. Well, he's on a free transfer now, so. Yeah, yes. I thought they was, gonna, they was trying to, he didn't want to negotiate until the end of the season. They were pissed. They were never going to use him again. But then Sharpie was like, get in the game. And they had a Dama Traore. But Dembele did better than Traore. And then he stopped mm-hmm. being injured. So, oh, I did hear that PSG was looking at him too. Yeah, yeah. You, don't know with Dem- you don't know with Dembele if he was just playing, obviously, up to, to get a move <laughs> um, or to get a new contract. And then he'll probably yeah. get it and then he'll just be injured again or something. Yeah, um, Who knows? Is. But I... I he, he might need to leave there. And obviously, you know, I think he'd be perfect for PSG if PSG don't get money, if money goes to Bayern, um, which it sounds more likely he would. Um, so, what what yeah, position would he play at Bayern? Right wing, I think, because Nabry will be leaving there. But they could play him as a nine or a, or a, or a right wing. Right. But there's rumours yeah. Nabry's going back to Arsenal. Oh, yeah. Which would be interesting. Yeah, apparently he loves he loves you know the club still. Um, he came through there for quite a few years. So um, yeah, there's rumours he's going back there. There's a whole yeah whole merry-go-round going on. I don't think Liverpool would miss Mane as much as people think they would because of Diaz. Yeah, I think obviously Diaz has come in. I think if they Jota. buy another centre forward, yeah, they got. I think they can go out and buy another centre forward or winger. Mane's thirty. Um, you know, they should take some money for him because he's in the last year now. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't think they would miss him as much as they're good. He's, he's, he's obviously a phenomenal player, but I don't think he's irreplaceable. I think keeping Salah would be way more important for them. Um, and like I say, Diaz has come in and been fantastic. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, it's, uh, it's not the end of the world for them. Yeah, Diaz will pass more. And that's <laughs> another problem. Like, if he had made like a pass or two instead of holding on to the ball, Liverpool could be champs. Uh, damn, I keep forgetting everything that just comes to mind. <laughs> There's a something else. It'll come back. Uh, do you guys want to do the questions? Yeah, we can do the questions. Yeah, or the England team. Oh, yes. Yeah. And you did the English team while, I guess, Neil mm. bringing up the questions. Um, so there's two games coming up, uh, which is uh, Hungary and Germany. Um, Race is Hungary. <laughs> that's it. Um, and then there's two games in England as well, um, both in Wolverhampton, which is strange. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so, so we're playing Hungary home and away, Germany away and Italy at home. Um, so it's... Um, yeah, it's crazy. The season finishes and then there's four games all in June. So the players yeah. are in that. They, they're, getting, they're getting no holiday. <laughs> no, it doesn't exist. It's almost better if you try not to be a, good enough to be an international player. You can have a real life and enjoy your money. <laughs> so here's yeah. the thing with the Hungary thing. So Hungary is supposed to have some fans banned like a, a fan band because of mm-hmm. racist chants to mm. black players. So here's their way around it. <laughs> this is pretty hilarious. But there's a loophole where kids can go see the game. So 30,000 children can see the game. But those children cannot go without no. a parent or yeah. guidance. So then they're using that loophole to, so all you got to do if you're a racist just find a kid that wants to go to the game <laughs> and you could go to the game and still be racist so that's why there's still going to be people even though the hungry fans are banned there's still going to be hungry so they, fans so they're going to be 60,000 hungry fans uh, uh, fans because if it's, maybe it's a one maybe, kid a parent yeah, that's well, yeah just, 50, just 50 percent kids and yeah. they're accompanying adults. Being taught to be racist by the race. <laughs> this is how, 
Oh, it's going to make the problem worse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. So that's that's the joke on that. That's all I can do is laugh at it. Oh, racism. I, I like how they made somebody in the Hungarian FA or I don't know, maybe UFO made the call that yeah, just let the kids in. They won't be racist. <laughs> like, how about the adult that's they, bringing them? Yeah. I'm just reading. They, they're getting 30,000 fans into that game. Yeah. So it's like a, just a regular game. Is the game in that's England? insane. There's one. Oh, we're Hungary. playing them home and away, Hungary. The first game is away. So we're playing Hungary in Budapest, Germany in Munich, and then Italy in Wolverhampton, and then Hungary in Wolverhampton. Right. Hmm. Damn. Who's on the team? The England team. Um, it's a big squad. Um, the ones who haven't been in previously or, or not for a little while. So Tamori's back in, which I agree with. Um, he's just been born in Italy in the language, winning the league. Got a title. Um, yeah. Yeah, doing all that good stuff. Uh, James Justin from Leicester has got his first call up. Um, left back, right? He, oh, right. Yeah. Left back, yeah. Um, so really obviously, with, yeah, that's because he has um, two first names, very <laughs> never at all. Yeah. With obviously, obviously, Chilwell's only just come back to fitness, um, yeah. so it was too early for him. So I think you know, it just gives us a left back there because the only other left back in the team is um, is, is Trippier, really. So um, there's no Luke Shaw. No, there's no Luke Shaw. Um, so mm. Trippier's in there, he, but Trippier's a right back who can play left back. Right. Um, or, or there's even the option of um, if we play three five two, Saka can play mm. as a yeah. left wing back. Um, so that there as well. And uh, Jared Owen is the other um, first time call up, mm. which I'm surprised it's taken this long because he's been on fire all season. Um, thinking, you know, he's 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 looked really good scoring goals in big moments for West Ham. So. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see if Tammy Abraham gets a game as well because he's in the squad, obviously, off the back of a great season for Roma. Mm-hmm. Go, good for him. But yeah, the midfield is looking exciting as well. The, the centre midfielders, there's so many good ones in there Bellingham, Gallagher, Mount, Phillips, Rice, and Ward Prowse. It's just it's an exciting uh, group of players, I think. Uh, it's good for Prowse. I, I want to see, like, this time, how long does it take for. Southgate to make up his mind about what formation to go in because last time <laughs> I, I remember both the Euros and the World Cup like he was fiddling things right up till the last moment so I, I hope he he kind of finds some stability mm-hmm. I'm actually very I'm much more excited about the Scotland Ukraine game tomorrow that's a that's oh, an actual yeah. game that matters it's, yeah uh, yeah there's a lot, lot on the line yeah who are you rooting for Scotland. Wow, you <laughs> Russian sympathizer. Still <laughs> loves Russian Abramovich, sympathizer. doesn't he? Just still, still loves Abramovich. <laughs> yeah, we knew it. No, that church, not that church basically just says a Roman Abramovich. <laughs> <laughs> no. Why I mean, Scotland? Well, I kind of want to see... I, I don't really care much for the result. I want to see how... Because, you, you know, it's been a pretty tough um, loan season for somebody like Billy Gilmer. So I just want to see how he goes. He's always uh, doing well when he plays on the national team. And oh. I think they have, Scotland has, after a long time, a group of players who are at a, at a decent level, like Robertson, Trippier. Um, and I, yeah, I just, I just like to see how, you know, how far they can go. Because if they get through, I think then they play Wales, right, in the second playoff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that would be you. interesting. A fully fully British uh, mm-hmm. battle there. But who knows? I think most of the world are going to be uh, are going to be rooting for Ukraine. Yeah, everybody mm-hmm. except Lee. Neil. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, anything else on the England squad before we go to the question? No, it's fairly, uh, fairly straightforward with that. I mean, uh, there's some players. Ben White's got an injury. 
Uh, Mark Gay, yeah, I, I like think, him. is struggling for the opening games, but he'll be ready for the last two, maybe, it says. Um, there's some stuff with the under-21s happening. So Tariq Lamptey mm. uh, said he didn't want to be called up because he's considering an offer from Ghana. Oh, no. um, I mean, if I was him, I would probably take that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah? Um, I, I, I think he's a fantastic player, but I just think in the yeah. position he plays, mm. um, he's going to find it difficult mm. to really nail down that spot. Um, as well as he plays, you know, it's with Trent there, with Rhys James... Um, with all the other possibilities there, players like Livramento coming through as well, it's going to be so tough to nail down a spot there with a foreseeable future. Whereas for Ghana, obviously, he'd be a you know star player. And also, he's if you mean this, with... hmm? he's ahead of Livramento in that pecking order. Only right then... now, but I think in, in the next couple of years, I think Livramento will go ahead of him purely because of um, he has more to his all round game than Lamptey. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. Lamptey be killing it, bro. And like also, also, if you go to Ghana right now, if you make the switch right now, you get to play at a World Cup, you know. Mm. And you get to be a starter at a World Cup. That's, yeah. uh, that's not something that happens all the time. Yeah, I had some noise about to try and change as well. Yeah, they, they're doing some interesting stuff, Ghana. They, 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 oh, yeah? I don't think they had a great team, but they somehow managed to beat Nigeria and uh, get to the World Cup. So... Mm. Yeah. I hope Lamptey stays English. I like him. Yeah, I just don't think he'll ever play, um, yeah. which is obviously what's playing on his mind that he's, uh, you know, got that not going for him. So keep the faith, Lamptey. Hang in there. <laughs> Football's a weird game. Lamptey's not a keep the faith guy. He's like go out and get the best for me guy. Like he could. I know he, he, he left he, you guys, he so. let us, Like even <laughs> though, I think he got his chances ahead of schedule. I think he was only eighteen. Mm-hmm. He pretty much made the switch from dev team to the main team within a couple of months. But the moment he got an offer, he was like, "Nah, I'm, I'm not hanging around here to wait till Reese so, James gets an injury." So he brightened. Ch- Chelsea, so you think he's going to Brighton, England, England and yeah. go to Ghana? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just, he just like hey, he probably man. has way more people in front of him at England than at Chelsea. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he, he has Trent, he's yeah. Kyle Walker. So yeah, damn. Sorry to sorry to lose your lamp if you go. <laughs> I like that kid. I think yeah. he's quality. Yeah, it'd be better uh, to see him balling, balling out at a World Cup for Ghana than uh, yeah, sitting on a bench true. for England and not even not even making a squad. Yeah, I guess I got to stop being selfish. You can't just be hoarding players. And shit. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, what you got, question wise? All right. Uh, okay, so Joseph Duda, obviously a great uh, companion on the podcast. He asked. Mm-hmm. Which team will make the most moves in the summer transfer window? Thanks for the great analysis this season and the laughs. You're welcome, Joe. So which team's going to make the most moves? I think there's they a difference between which, which team ahead. will make the most and which team need to make the most. Right. Yeah. <laughs> who need, who think, needs to make the most in your eyes? Man United. <laughs> they, you know, there was a statement today. It was kind of disturbing, <laughs> but it's only disturbing if you don't believe. So it's disturbing to the Man United fans, but if the Man United fans are going to back the coach, they cannot be disturbed. And if they believe in the coach and if they really want a Ten Hag and believe in his quality, then they shouldn't be terrified by the statement. But I know during transfer windows, fans only can track themselves emotionally contract their team's progress by we bought this player, we bought that player, and we bought that player. You know, that's how fans feel optimistic about going into the season. They always forget about who didn't play, who's in the youth system, or, you, you know, they, you know, we're always like happy to have a, a homegrown talent, but we don't, we trust our progress and our esteem comes from what we buy. So the statement from Real Madrid 
not Real Madrid, Man United was like about trusting and and Ten Hag as a coach to get the players that we have there now and bring them up to the level that we need them to be or expect them to be when we got them in the first place. So Man United kind of insinuated that there won't be a lot of activity in the transfer window. And the fans are not feeling those players and believe that there just needs to be wholesale changes. But they also believe in Ten Hag. But if you believe in Ten Hag, you got to believe that he can turn these players around. Now, I do believe that we were not coached well when, when it comes to Ali. But I also know that they didn't want to be coached by Ragnick. I don't know why. I don't know why he couldn't reach them. I think he, he did compromise a lot. He was also in a kind of sticky situation with Ronaldo. And, uh, you know, so he couldn't, with Ronaldo on the team, play the type of football he wanted to play. And he, mm -hmm. and he also wanted to get the results, you know. So he couldn't change to this entire system. But can Ten Hag do it? Hopefully. Can those players play better? Like, those players had a terrible season. They're all internationals. Maguire had a terrible season. Great international. Uh, not great, but really good international before that. Luke Shaw. You know, Ra Rashford, completely different this year than the year before. Like, if Rashford had came to the first team and played the way he played this season, you'd never hear of him. He'd never be able to tweet so that kids would have free meals. If this was how he came to Manchester United first team this season, like, as opposed to how he came in. So he fell yeah. off. Can he be put, get back on? Like, why did everybody fall off? You know, why did everybody fall off? It's so weird. It's like, it's like the Bermuda Triangle of skills. All their skills and their will and their effort just disappeared for some reason. And mm -hmm. if he can get to the bottom of that, maybe we don't have to buy a lot. And at the same time, in the transfer market, there's, there's always going to be rumors about Manchester United wanting this player and this player, but you could see that they're making a definite push to get certain players. So it's not going to be like, we're not going to have no transfer activity, probably not as much as fans want. So I think there's been a lot of outgoings though in terms of contracts. So like Matic, Lingard, yeah. Mata, Cavani, Pogba. Uh, Jones, Pogba. Like that's a, that's there's a few spaces out there. I mean, obviously those guys weren't all starters for you. Right. Um, but yeah, the ones I'm seeing linked mainly is um, Durian Timber, the uh, right. the Dutch defender from Ajax. Um, apparently you and Liverpool both after Darwin Nunes who right. I thought looked really good this season in the Champions League for uh, Benfica mm -hmm. um, so that, that'll be an interesting one um, obviously the De Jong link keeps going around because Barca need the money um, right. you know see if <laughs> see if they'll uh, they'll pour that's why I hope <laughs> that's why I hope Lewandowski does leave and go to Barcelona <laughs> so which is weird that they're trying to buy another forward they got mm. a Bamiyang they got, they have uh, Ferran Torres, the pie, yeah, Ferran Torres, the pie, and you're gonna get like, it, it kind of doesn't. And they also sense. have a lot of money issues, right? Like, yeah, Barcelona, they they're in debt, so that's why we have a chance of getting the young. Yeah, so I don't know yeah, how they get. Gonna... If they get Dembele's wages off the bill, and mm. the young goes, his wages plus a transfer fee, it yeah frees up a bit more, I guess. But then they're letting go of players who they need to get in players in positions where they already have played people. Yeah, so weird. it's just Barcelona. <laughs> it just shows like what has led to their current situation. I'll tell you one thing. If they don't get... If they lose Dembele the way he played the last mm. part of the season, which I get your concern, Lee. Mm. Like, you just don't know after he signs a contract which Dembele you're going to get. I mean, but if they don't replace that force that he became, like, they're in trouble for the entire next season. So, yeah, we yeah, managed to see which way it goes. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, Chelsea is heavily interested in Dembele because of the whole uh, 
tutor link from Dortmund. Mm. Yeah. 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 Another thing is for Chelsea, speaking of transfers, listen, you, I just saw something before. <laughs> this Tuchel Lukaku thing isn't settled. They, they got yeah. beef, bro. There's <laughs> real beef. Like, a, I don't know if it was a reporter asking Tuchel, because Lukaku said he's going to talk to the new owners. And Tuchel acted like he just heard about this, and he kind of laughed. Well, if he wants to go talk to them, it's like the insult of Lukaku's lawyer or Lukaku going to talk to the owners above, going above is Tuchel's head is not the vibe. And you mm-hmm. could tell, you know, you, those two guys. The, the, the thing with Lukaku is like, it's such a complicated financial thing. So even if you want to leave, it's not easy for you to leave. Like you're, you're tied into a big contract. So the only good thing here is from a pretty club perspective is that usually if a player has to go, it's the club's responsibility to offload the guy because he's on big wages. Why would he want to go? But in this case, if the move is coming from Lukaku himself, then, you know, it's probably up to him to go find a club that that he can have a wage arrangement with. Like, if he's willing to go and get a pay wage cut, you know, that's on him. So, apparently, I think that- Inter have a loan plus buy option in the works. Yeah, the thing that's a, that's a strange one though because I I heard his lawyer was his lawyer's doing a lot of work at the moment. His lawyer's speaking to the he owners f- he's speaking to into Milan. He fired his agent. Yeah, yeah, the thing yeah, with yeah like that. he's this was the agent who he was absolutely you know brothers with like Instagram posts all the time and you know uh, they they were like more than just an agent player like they were brothers they were friends and now like in the last week or so his aide that agent gave a interview mm-hmm. saying that you know Lukaku is that was the thing like look that was the interview that you're talking about where he, he mentioned that Lukaku is waiting to speak to the um, waiting to speak to the new owners before deciding anything it wasn't Lukaku who said that it was the agent who said that in the interview and then Lukaku puts up uh, on his Instagram, a statement saying that I will never let uh, nobody's allowed to speak on my behalf. Oh, okay. I, I can speak. So, and then he fires him. Obviously, he didn't like what he did. Like, he probably stepped out of line. So, he fires him, and now he has a lawyer acting as his agent. So, Lukaku needs to have a, a seance and speak to, speak to Rayola. <laughs> <laughs> Get him on his team. He'll, Listen, he'll, 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 he'll find a move somewhere for him. Yeah. Listen, you don't listen to dead Royola or a live Royola. If you don't listen, <laughs> it's all trouble. <laughs> Either Royola is bad. Hey, he'll get him that. He'll get him that money though. But it, it'd be fun to like if he ha- actually do get Dembele with Dembele on the right. So somebody said this will be Dembele on the right, Pulisic on the left, and the NHS down the middle because <laughs> they're both gonna be injured all the time. Yeah, hilarious. So any other? Co- any other questions? Oh, uh, yeah. Let's see how much time we got left. Uh, okay, Cody Lorendi asks thoughts on the on the the US USL League One and the USL Championship and the USL Women's League. Do you guys follow the championship, like second divisions in the US? I like how uh, you just call it the championship. <laughs> well, they're calling it the USL Championship. So oh, okay. I was following it last season when uh, um, was it Orange County won it last season? Mm-hmm. They're down at the bottom this season. But yeah, because it's split uh, east and west. All I know is that the, the team who Southampton are paired with are doing terribly. Um, Hartford, Hartford Athletic out in Connecticut, they're third bottom in the Eastern Conference, which, yeah, that sounds like a team that's associated with us. 
But um, yeah, there's there's one team who I, I follow on social media who um, are always doing crazy stuff is Detroit City. Um, they got like a huge fan base. Mm. Um, they always have like crazy atmosphere at their games, men's and women's. Um, they're third in the Eastern Conference at the moment. But yeah, I like the I like the vibe there. It's uh, that seems pretty cool. The only thing um, I know about the USL Championship is that. Louisville, Louisville City is one, is is at the top of the the East, and San Antonio is at the top <laughs> of the West. And the reason why I know that's because I'm reading it right now. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I know. I don't, it's it's just too much other football for me to follow the USL. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I'm going to start paying attention now. I, I, I'm trying to make a conscious effort to check every week and see <laughs> and what's going on. I think the U.S. Uh, structure, like the pyramid doesn't, I mean, there's no pyramid, right? So it doesn't help. Like if you really want to get interested in these uh, leagues, it doesn't help the fact that they're totally disconnected from the, from the first division here. Mm. So, yeah, they need a chance of going up. It's, it's silly yeah. that there's no... Yeah. They do it like baseball. The players have a chance of going up, of getting promoted <laughs> to the to the majors, but not the teams. It's like it's like baseball minor league teams do not go up. <laughs> yeah. Is it is it the San Diego team, Neil, who are like have Landon Donovan involved? Yeah, but I the you mean the San Diego Loyal? Loyal. Yeah, I think they're it's third, the San Diego they're third, Loyal. by the way. Yeah, it's a loyal okay. the third. Yeah, yeah. That one's Landon Donovan's. And then there's another team. It's called Albion, San Diego Albion. But maybe they're not in the championship. Maybe they, they're even below. Yeah, they're not in the championship. They might be lower. Yeah, they, they, they're not in this. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that so, <laughs> because I'm looking at all the teams in it right now. And uh, they're not there. Yeah. There's a Red Bulls 2. There's a Galaxy 2. Yeah, there's Atlanta United 2 as well. Yeah. They're they the don't even use the Roman teams. numerals. They just say 2, the number 2. <laughs> the Red Bulls uses the Roman numerals, and so does <laughs> LA Galaxy 2. So. Yeah, there's a Vegas team as well. They play at a baseball stadium. Uh, oh, man. Their kit's quite interesting. Oh, yeah? I got to look that up. It's all like neon colors because it's Vegas. Oh, it's funny. And they are called the Las Vegas Lights. <laughs> <laughs> These teams have like, when the MLS first came, only one MLS team really had a football name. Like now the MLS teams, especially the expansion teams, they sound like, like European soccer teams. Like it always bugged me, like some of the names, like I like like I, what was Utah? Like I like Utah. I think it was Utah. Let me see. Some of these are more traditional, though. Like um, you know, like Detroit City, um, Hartford Athletic. But yeah, then you got some fun ones. You got the Tampa Bay Rowdies, an old historic See? name in there. Mm. Pittsburgh Riverhounds. They're like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, hey, we take we playing football here. You want people to take you serious and gravitate <laughs> towards you? You you doing that, bro? What else they got? They what is in the MLS the Vancouver. What is Vancouver's name in the MLS? White White Caps. White Caps, yeah. That's not isn't that the hockey team? No, it's the F yeah. That's that's kind of I mean it's not bad. You know, is it wasn't that uh, Alfonso Davies steam? Yeah, he, yeah that's where he came yeah. yeah, it's where he came through as a teenager. I am pretty uh I'm, I am planning to go down to watch the, uh, some of the women's um, WSL, I think. Or is it oh, the, yeah? Yeah. NWSL, NWSL. Yeah. NWSL. Because the San Diego yeah. team... Is it the San Diego in, Wave? 
San Diego Wave. Team. They're a new team from this season. They're top of the table right now. So yeah, they've got. Um, I think they've got the English coach Casey Stoney. Casey Stoney, yeah. Um, there as well. So yeah, they'll be an interesting team. So obviously, there's the new LA team that are playing at the uh, the same stadium as LAFC. Hmm. I mean, they got Alex Morgan. So you know that that's the that's the marquee name with the San Diego team. Mm. All right. How old is she now? Probably thirties. Uh, let me check. Yeah, she it's came 32. over here and tried to play for play for Spurs for a bit, but she was always mm. injured. She'd just come back from having a kid as well. Yeah. Um, mm. So she was never fully fit for them, and then mm. she went back to Orlando, I think, after that. Yeah. So what else you got, Neil? Um. What else? Okay, so as a Adam, I think he's a Liverpool fan. I might be wrong, but he asked Liverpool scored zero goals across two cup finals and the Champions League final. Did the fixture list catch up with them or something to worry about moving forward? I think it kind of ties into the whole Mane discussion, right? Because Mane, Mane Fabino, Salah, they're all three are uh, reaching the end of their contracts. They're a season out now. So Salah's already said that he's staying next season. So they're probably trying to do the balancing act. So you let Mane go, get some money in from him, cash in on him, and then reinvest in getting somebody else in before, you know, who knows if Firmino and Salah, both of them go by the end of next season. Because they've already gotten, the, the really good thing they've done is they've already gotten Diaz in and Jota in. They got this guy, uh, Carvalho from Fulham, who is not a forward, but he's in more of an attacking mid. So they've got players who can, like, you know, get the goals in or while still having some of these aging. They still stars. got Minamino. Still got Minamino, super sub. Yeah, and he could, he might be able to play more. Mm. And, uh, interesting to see if that Darwin Nunes transfer does happen because I'm really excited to see him in the Premier League, whoever he does yeah. go to. Um, but I think he would he would suit either team. But I think he would definitely fit in well at Liverpool. Um, mm. His work rate's unreal as well. So he's uh, oh yeah, yeah. So we need him then. <laughs> <laughs> he he is being talked about as the next Cavani. Like he mm. looks similar, plays probably similar. Yeah, Uruguayan as well. Uruguayan, so. yeah. So Benfica is trying to get Premier League prices for him. I was like, no, it's a Portuguese <laughs> league. Calm down. You can't start. You can, you your your real estate is the price of where your real estate is at. You can't be like charging LA prices for <laughs> an inland empire apartment. <laughs> you can't be trying to, trying to you know say like you 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 charge what you charge. Yeah, you, the, you the whole point is that you you can't sell him for what his sell on price might be now. <laughs> Like he Benfica has are good at that. Price. Yeah. So what? Benfica are good at that. They did it with Jao Felix. They got a massive price oh, for him they, uh, to Atletico. They, they're they're, they're they good at getting their money. Atletico off. They hyped that kid. No, but they always so do it. Like Benfica, Porto, and I think the third in that list is Sevilla. These three teams, they make a killing just by doing this. Mm. I mean, they play hardball. Yeah. I'll pay Get 60 for him. But, you know, mm-hmm. he's got to earn more. You know? I mean, yeah. Well, they, they, they're asking for 80 and apparently yeah. some clubs, or eight, they're asking between 70, 80 and yeah, clubs Euros. are saying like 60 tops. Yeah, You only need I one Polish so, yeah. club to bite and then everybody else has to follow suit. Yeah. All of a sudden, <laughs> Newcastle, all of a sudden Newcastle yeah. decide they want him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they, I name, oh, they, shit, they might. <laughs> Damn. That money, oh, wow, what a threat. Yeah, yeah, they could fuck the market up depending on who they go for. Yeah, shit. The, I think, Lee, that's interesting what you just said about Nunes to Liverpool because I just realized if Mane is going, because Mane was playing as their number nine most of the season, mm-hmm. and the other guy, Origi, is already leaving. Firmino barely played the season, so it's almost like he's being phased out anyway. So, I don't think there's any other choice. Like they have to be in the market for a for a number nine or even like a false false line. So yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. Like I say, apparently it's a straight battle between United and and Liverpool for him. So that'll be interesting. I am. Yeah. So I think I Liverpool's just... like scoring is an issue, but it's also an issue that I I feel they will have an answer because they have been able to get players like Jota, Diaz, Diaz. I think he has he's got a lot of skills and tricks, but he's not the he's not the finished product yet. So probably yeah. another season of the, the club. There's always yeah, there's always an adjustment when you come from the Portuguese league where you can do it all yourself. Yeah. Whereas you know, Klopp needs to coach him and and get mm-hmm. him more cohesive with the team and say you know, sometimes you can do it by yourself here, but you can't always. You need to you know you need to work better with these other guys because I mean, he's shown that he's got massive potential though, and if he mm-hmm. just you know if if Klopp can coach him and add those little bits to his game, he'll be one of the best in the world. He he gets a little frustrated and like if he's not able to get a clear path to goal, he'll start taking these long shots, which you know they're, they're low percentage. I think that's something that they can definitely work on. Mm. Not a passer, <laughs> allergic to passing, but he's gr- potentially great player. I saw, right great, I saw a great video of Luis Diaz's younger brother dancing. Oh, at the nightclub with, I think they're having these celebrations with the uh, club. Oh, yeah. That's and, uh, yeah. You'd, you'd never expect those two together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Any other? Scott Tatman asks, where does Real Madrid's title run rank in the history of the Champions League? I think it's up there just because of the run. Yeah. Like, like, you beat PSG. Then you beat Chelsea. Then you beat Man City. Then you beat Liverpool. All of these teams were touted above you to be in the final and win the thing. All the teams that could possibly win it, you beat them. Like, Liverpool played Villarreal. No disrespect to Villarreal, but it, it, like, this was the toughest road that I can remember yeah, me a too. team ever taken yeah. to win the final. So it's up there. Like even the players, even that this is their fifth one, they were in disbelief. That's mm-hmm. how much you know it meant. You know? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd definitely put it up there. Um, some of the ones that stick out was, you know, United in 99 with the treble winning season. Yeah. The two legs against Juventus were crazy. Um, mm-hmm. They were huge games. I think they had Barcelona in their group stage. Mm. Um, who they had some crazy games against as well. Um, so that was a, that was a pretty big run, obviously to you know win the way they did against Bayern. Um, right. So they took out, you know, they played like Bayern, Bayern, Barca, and Juve, who were the three probably best teams in the, you know, in Europe at that that time. So um, that one's definitely up there. Um, yeah, it's it's Chelsea had one. one when they had to beat Barcelona, and they played Bayern in Bayern because the game was at. In Bayern, that, that final Munich, and they had a man yeah. down in one in the in the is it in the Barcelona, and then they had players Barcelona. suspended. Yeah, they had players suspended for the final. But like all four rounds being top teams, I don't think that's. That, I've never team. seen that. Yeah, I've never seen that. The fact that Real took out the top three in the Premier League, <laughs> yeah, as well, it's just crazy. <laughs> it's actually pretty uh, embarrassing for the rest of Europe. Like how this team, <laughs> like <laughs> it's it's the it's the scammiest. <laughs> what money heist I've ever seen, but it's a bad thing for the you know that the, so many good teams let it happen. I just uh, man, I don't uh, you still won't give them credit. What do you? No, I'm giving him them credit, but I'm not. I'm you're, not... you're like you you give them credit, like Messi says. Well, Messi say no disrespect to Real Madrid, but you weren't the best team. Messi, they went through everybody. Yeah, they might not have looked good. What are you talking about? They won. Yeah, they yeah, won. So... I'm just saying, like, they didn't play the best football, but they were the best team. Yeah, the name's on the trophy. You yeah. can't argue. Yeah. I would say they were the best team. But Messi I mean, I would, take, I would take what they did or trying yeah. to look pretty over, you know, 180 minutes of football. Percent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you think out, about like I say, three, three Premier League teams, which have all got huge money, and then the one team outside the Premier League who've probably got the most money in PFG. Yeah. Mm. I, I have a question that's not on the thing. This is for Lee. You're in England. So who was wrong? The French police, Liverpool fans, both? And, and what's, the, what's the vibe over there? 
as far as like the, the delay of the game, the fans not being getting in, being it letting and uh, tear gas. I mean, it's a it's a tough one um, because obviously, you know, without being there, I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. There's lots of stories from all different sides. The French police and government are blaming the Liverpool fans. The Liverpool fans are saying, um, you know, otherwise that the organisation was poor. French are accusing them of having like, you know, loads of fans turn up with fake tickets and things. Um, but for me, like from what everything I've seen and read, mm-hmm. I would say that it seems like the French police and UEFA were in the wrong. It sounds like there weren't mm-hmm. enough exit or there weren't enough entrances open to safely get all the fans in the stadium. Um, it seems like a lot of them were there well in advance of the game. Um, and, you know, I, I've, I've had experience with the French police. Um, oh, yeah. When I went to the, the Euros, I went to England versus Russia in Marseille. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, you know, there was a, a lot going on <laughs> that game. Um, and, you know, I, I, I experienced what tear gas tastes like um, at that game. Yeah. Even though just, just by being close to the England fans, I, you know, I, I went there not wearing any England colours or anything and just mm-hmm. trying to stay away from all that shit. And it's still... Just still, going wee-wee you know, ma- to everybody. It's, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It still, it still managed to find me. Um, but yeah, so the French police are very, very, very um, heavy handed. They, they don't require any provocation really to want to get involved with, um, with stuff like that. So some of the videos didn't look very good as well, that the, you know, the stuff they were doing. Um, on the other hand, I know that when English fans travel in large numbers, no matter which club they're associated with or whether it's with the national team, um, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of heavy drinking, there's a lot of bad behavior going on, but. I don't think there was anything that warranted the response they got from the French police um, or from the organisers. So um, I think the blame very much lies with with UEFA and the French. Um, but we'll see if there's any investigation into what happens. But you, you just don't want to see that. You know, the game the game is about the fans, and for a big occasion like that, you want the fans in the stadium. You want, um, you know, you don't want to see that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think the blame is pretty much all with them. Yeah, I haven't seen, I've seen ticket, I've seen footage of fans just chilling and getting tear gas, but I haven't seen any footage of an English fan using a fake ticket, mm. it, which the French government claims was the cause of it. Like, where is all this? Let's see that. And I saw it on mm. Sky, like that, just that one tight entrance that they had everybody coming through, like yeah. cattle. Yeah, yeah they... Yeah, they, they 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 kill ethical animals better than they let the Liverpool fans like leading them to such a joyous mm. occasion, the, the route to such a joyous yeah. occasion. And it's like if, they, if there were so many fake tickets, why weren't you rounding those people up and arresting them and saying like, where did you get these tickets then? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they claim there was 70% of people turning up with fake tickets. So it's like, well, what, how do you back those numbers up? How, how, how are you counting them? Why weren't you taking those tickets and investigating it? Mm-hmm. Um, it feels like a bit of a wild claim from them but yeah um they're they're not coming out of it looking good the french and i you know calls into question why it wasn't handled better there yeah unless they're not showing us the videos that they're claiming happened because i haven't seen any you know all right let's do one more question um Harris Fields penalty, we already discussed that. Okay, so Sam Fay asks, where do these players end up? We can do this real quickly. Gareth Bale. <laughs> I know he's going to be playing uh, for Wales. <laughs> <laughs> but after that, I have no idea. Yeah, because he he I don't think he has the the sort of player profile to play for Conte at Spurs. Mm. Um, and it sounds like Spurs oh, are left wing back. Targets. Perfect left wing back. <laughs> Go back. Oh, to they, they did get Perisic, um, though. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so I don't think he'll be he'll be needed there. Um, I think he'll come back to this country. Um, I think he'll come back to the Premier League most likely. But uh, I don't know uh, who. I don't know who can pay his wages. I mean, I think he would be a bad, bad choice for United. Um, you know, he'd be an expensive mistake there. It'd be interesting, you know, mm-hmm. to see if there's any. Club. We like making those expensive mistakes. <laughs> so, yeah, right? do, do you see him coming back to where it all began? 
Oh, I, I, I would take him back <laughs> with us um, out of pure sentiment. Get him, you know, get Walcott back fit again. We'll play the two of them. See if Shaw fancies coming. See if we can get Shaw back from from uh, United. Get Ox back from Liverpool. Start putting the band <laughs> back together again. Um, <laughs> Uh, but no, I, mean, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, the crazy thing is, it's not that unrealistic because they're all probably looking for new clubs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who knows? Um, Walcott's already Bale, here. Yeah, Bale. It depends what his wage demands are as well, because I think if if he asks for anything close to what he's getting Real Madrid, I don't think many clubs are going to meet him. Nobody's um, ever going to pay him that amount. ever again. No. He knows that six hundred thousand yeah. a week. So I think he, he's, he's going to end up somewhere where they probably have more money than cents. So that would maybe suggest to me somewhere like Everton Newcastle. Um, or Newcastle. Yeah, somewhere where they just, they, yeah, somewhere where they've got money to burn. Um, or maybe a, you know, a club with a bit of ambition who maybe need another forward option like West Ham because um, Antonio can't play every game there. Um, so it could be an option for somewhere like that, but it depends if they want to pay that sort of money. So it's it's a difficult one to predict where he's going to end up, um, because yeah, it's uh, depends where his aims are and what his demands are. I think it looks like a very simple MLS player to me, <laughs> because he's kind of winding down his his career at the top level. He has been winding down for mm. a couple of seasons. We saw when he had to suddenly go back to Spurs, and. He was expected to actually turn up and play week in week out. He wasn't able to do it, so <laughs> it's probably his like his whole reg- system reg- you know, his mm. fitness regime, everything is not geared up for top level European football yeah. anymore. So it'll be, it'll be a hard one for him to walk into the ML- MLS mid season when people have already got their designated players sorted uh, for someone to find the money there. Um, I don't know if they could do that, um, but. Yeah, no, yeah, I guess we'll see. It depends, depends where where maybe the best golf courses are because that's his other priority. So yeah. maybe if um, if into Miami could find some money, he'd, he'd probably be at home in Florida. Mm-hmm. Whoever has good golf weather, that's where he's going to show up. And yeah. He needs to come to Southern California. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he needs to make that move quick before it's time for Ronaldo and Messi to come here because then they're going to be get, taking in all the money. There's not going to be much <laughs> left for him. Was there, was there, uh, was there other players? In yeah, yeah. Le- Lewandowski, I think you mentioned Barcelona, right? Which sounds impossible to me based on my limited, yeah. uh, ex- my limited like, encounters with math. I feel <laughs> like it doesn't add up, but so... <laughs> But he's, he, he wants to be out. I don't know where he thinks he's going to go. He's Lewandowski, but he played in the Bundesliga and he's 34. So a lot of people are going to be like, I don't know if he could do that in other leagues. The, you know, Bayern kind of has that league sewn up. So it, it's, it's not going to be as easy as he thinks. I'd like to see him in the Premier League, though, just out of interest um, mm-hmm. to see, you know, especially if, if Lukaku does head off from Chelsea, would he be an option there? Um, as a number nine, obviously, you'd have to use him sparingly because I don't think he could play every game of a busy season, um, you know, league and cup and everything. But I think he, you know, it'd be interesting to see what he could do in the Premier League. He's still in very good shape. He seems almost like an Ibrahimovic style kind of guy in terms of his lifestyle, um, mm-hmm. where he, he will probably comfortably play for another two or three years at a decent level. So, um, yeah, Chelsea have been the other club linked. So it'd be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, there's been some vague links. I'm not that sure it's very credible that you're going for Lewandowski. Um, you're getting Bale and Lewandowski. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Mo Salah, I think he's already said that he's staying at Liverpool. So at least for one more season, yeah. we don't need to worry about Salah. Right. Lukaku, there are rumours today that Inter is trying to do uh, a loan move with... Uh, obligation to buy next season so th- there might be something happening there and uh, the last guy there is Lacazette I haven't heard anything about him I think he's out of oh no I, don't think, I think he has one year left on his contract mm-hmm. um, or he might be out of contract I'm not sure because they had Nketiah was out of contract but I think he yeah. signed the new deal 
Yeah, because he played towards the end of the season when Lacazette got injured. But Lacazette did play good. He didn't score goals, but he did all the he did a lot of tangible things that like that justifies him being in the squad. But uh mm. you know, I know yeah, the fans like, like out of contract. Yeah, he's out of contract this summer, so oh, nice. I think he's he's on a big wage there as well. So if they're trying to buy a new forward, mm. then probably makes sense to have Niketra as the backup and pay some money for someone else to come in and get get uh, like a Z off the wage bill. Mm. Yeah, I think that was the last question. All right, cool. Well, thanks, guys. Any last words? Um, no, just uh, let's, let's let's hope let's hope the summer goes quick. Let's get the Premier League back. <laughs> so I am. <laughs> yeah, the Premier League is beginning. I think two seasons, two weeks earlier than usual, right? It's on the third uh, of August. Yeah. So I'm eager. I'm eager to see how bad we can be next season. Hilarious. <laughs> Uh, uh, this is what I'll do just for the people watching and listening next week we're off but I have that podcast mm. with Charlie Asensio so I'll, so I'll post that and then we'll figure out when we're going to come back mm. maybe take a how, how long because how, there's going to be a lot of transfer rumors and stuff but I feel mm. like the window opens in 10 days officially Right. I think the window is June 1st, right? So it should open tomorrow. Maybe. Okay. And that's also only the official opening. I think players have already been signed, like Hallen, Perisic. People have already been signed. Yeah, July 1st. Yeah. Oh, is it July 1st? Oh. No, no, no. Let me see. June 1st. So this is where FIFA's Worldwide transfer calendar says that the wind, the summer window opens in France, Italy, Germany, and Spain on July first. June tenth. Yeah. June tenth. So yeah, yeah, it is ten days. Yeah. So England ten days. I don't know. It, yeah. It's, I thought everybody had the same window. Mm. Yes, yeah, weird. It says it says the transfer market is expected to reopen on Friday, June tenth. Although most international deals will not go through until July first. Right. That's when it won't go. But yeah, yeah. Nothing, I mean, not that anything happens. Then teams aren't training, so the deals just get agreed in principle, and then they become mm-hmm. official uh, in terms of the players' registration on the first. But I think a lot of stuff will get done before then. All right, we'll see what's up. I'll post to Charlie Asensio next week, and uh, sure, it's been a. I would like to say it's been a fun season. Started out amazing. Transfer window was the best part of our season. <laughs> and like the first game against Leeds. And then anytime we introduced somebody new, like when Veron came to Old Trafford, we won those games. Or just introducing Ronaldo, we won those games. But after that, mm. the wheels came off. Yeah. off. Axel and everything, and we just, <laughs> God damn, we couldn't even Flintstone it across the finish line. It was just, I, I don't know. So I'm just happy the season's over, and good luck, Ten Hag. I hear good things. He's a big infrastructure and planning man. Let's hope this shit works. Just well, don't keep calling me some mount. Hey man, just, just hands off hey. some mount. Hey man, like they say in a pimp game, <laughs> there's this old Superfly movie where one guy got another guy's prostitute and the guy was mad and he stepped to the prostitute. So he stepped to the guy, the pimp that took his prostitute and the pimp was like, hey man, your bitch chose me. <laughs> so I don't blame a guy for that. trying. Yeah. <laughs> come on, man. We, come on, Ten Hag gotta shoot his shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He saw him in the Holland, I guess, back in the day. Yeah. And then, and then if he read the Rudiger farewell letter and what mm. Rudiger said about uh, Mason Mount, uh, you gotta, you gotta oh, yeah. put your hand on his knee. <laughs> 
and invite yeah. him out to dinner. I hope we do that too. I think you're good though. All right, guys. That's it. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Aaron Burngard, producer. Thank you, everybody who listens and watches. I'll post a, a podcast next week. It's just an interview mm-hmm. with a picture, but like audio. All right. Stay here. Three, two, three, two, one. Okay, one more. Three, two, one. Got it. All right, cool. All right, thanks, guys. Cheers, guys. Cheers, thanks. Guys. Front guard. Catch you later. All right, cool. talk Cheers, to you. Later. All right, it's yes, been thanks. fun. See ya. All right.